Hey everybody, Jay Glazer here, bringing you another episode of Guidance by Glazer. It is episode 12. I'm sorry for my few week hiatus. As many of you saw last week, I was in Miami, enjoying the luxuries of the real estate market there. We saw some amazing properties. I hope you chimed in. Uh, I know I really enjoyed my time there and I enjoyed touring these properties, so hopefully you got a little taste of what I got to experience. We're back here in New York City. Feels like winter, it really stinks, but we're just gonna be plowing ahead because we have no choice. Cold weather be damned. So today we're talking about the best in show. And what does that mean? That means how to get your home and keep your home ready to sell and ready to show. The stresses of selling a home are abundant. They are, they are bountiful, if you will. And one of our jobs as your real estate professional is to try to make it as smooth and painless and stress-free as possible, which is not always the easiest thing to do, but one such technique we like to employ um, is really getting your home ready uh, and optimizing the condition of the home so that by the, by the time you do go on the market, that stress of being on the market and having people come in and out of the home is minimized, time on market shortened, and get your home sold for the highest possible price on the best possible terms as quickly as we possibly can. Whenever I talk to a seller, and a buyer for that matter, I always say there's, there's really three key buckets that a customer has to be ready, has to be prepared for, um, and has to be kind of checked off in order to list their property. And those three buckets are financial, emotional, and logistical. So of course, when it's speaking financially, that means what's your plan? What's your money plan? Are you selling to, uh, to buy something else? Are you selling to just get out of Dodge? Are you selling because you think it's a good time to sell? Or maybe you're an investor? Whatever the case may be, that's the financial component of selling. Then there's the emotional component of selling. If this is your home, if this is your longtime home, you raised kids here, you had a baby here, you got married in this apartment, you um, lived there for 30 plus years, whatever the case may be, or it was your parents' apartment, you have to be emotionally ready to let go of that property. And oftentimes people think they are, but when it actually comes time to list, they aren't. Um, so that's the second bucket. And the third bucket, which is really what we're addressing today, is logistically ready to sell. Have you taken the necessary steps with the physical structure of your home, meaning the interior components, uh, the, the condition, the necessary steps to really present your home as best as you can on the market. So I'm going to talk about six steps that can help you with that readiness to sell, the, the actual act of preparing the home. As I said, making a home show ready. Um, so the first step really is, as painful as it might be, suffer now by decluttering and organizing your home so that you can sell quicker and for more money, right? So again, before your home is actually on the market and you're exposed to the marketplace and there's no turning back, do the necessary steps up front. So if it takes an extra two weeks, three weeks, a month, whatever the case may be, to get your home in the best possible condition you can, take that time Go through the painful process now, because by the way, even if you decide in a week from now that after you've done all this work, oh my God, that was so much effort, I can't even list my home now, it's too stressful, at least you've decided ahead of time before you've actually listed to make that choice. So the worst case scenario is you just spend a week cleaning up your home. That's the step number one. Step number two is find catharsis in the removal. What happens is, uh, you often find that when you're cleaning out your home and you're getting rid of the bar mitzvah photos or the, uh, the, uh, your wedding gown that you no longer need because you got married 47 years ago, or maybe you're getting rid of your graduation gown, whatever it is, find the, the happiness, find the, the pleasure in cleaning out all of these old items that I guarantee we all have that you're now breathing new light into the space because wow, 33% of everything in your home, poof, it's gone. There's a lot of ways to do those things. You can either just get rid of them and throw them in the bin, rent a trash can, go to the trash can in the building, whatever it is, just do a couple of trips back and forth to the compactor room. Um, that's thing number one. Item number two is you could donate them. It's very nice to go to uh, a local, um, let's say Salvation Army or a Goodwill store. I do that regularly. I try to go maybe, uh, let's call it once a quarter and donate some jackets, some shirts, some pants, some books, whatever it is. Donating them, you can always get a write-off, which is nice for anybody who wants the write-off. You can, you can save some money and taxes by donating those items and getting that write-off. You could sell them. There's a lot of websites now and places where you can sell items. Craigslist is not the only vendor for selling, for selling your items. Um, or 
if you don't want to get rid of anything and you are one of those people who like to hold on to everything and there's plenty of us out there just get a storage bin the reality is in manhattan brooklyn wherever you are uh, there are a lot of storage rental places they're not as expensive as you might think for a couple hundred dollars and for three months you could no, no, back on, back on. we're back okay <laughs> technical problem my friends we have a new videographer he's a little wet behind the ears forgive him uh, we also broke our tripod because we tried to bring it down to Miami and you know how the airlines are It's like they just punched my tripod in the face. <laughs> it was really not a pleasant experience But we're back on let's continue to talk back to the catharsis So the last thing I was saying is rent a storage unit. It's not hard uh, to find storage in Manhattan uh, In fact, I think it's called Manhattan mini storage uh, is one of the vendors So really do all of those things to remove the the uh, extra clutter and items from the home and the nice thing about working with someone like uh, like the Glazer team like my team is we'll guide you we often send photo um, journals if you will to all of our clients outlining exactly what they should get rid of so that there's no surprises it's not like should we get rid of this planter should we not should we keep that vase should we not we'll tell you exactly what we think you need to do and in many instances we'll help you do it we will actually show up to your home and physically help you pack your home with you my team takes a very hands-on all hands on deck type approach to listing a home for sale. And we know that the stress of getting a home ready can be immense, so we will do what we can to help you in this situation. Tip number three, cheat where you can, all right? Everybody has extra nooks and crannies in their home. If you have an excessive closet and it's big enough to show the value of the space, but also big enough to store your extra crap, stuff it in there, right? Organized, but stuff it in there. If you have an elevated bed, stuff as much garbage underneath your bed as you humanly possibly can. I know that when I sold my apartment, I just jammed it down there, right? Get it all under the bed. The point is when a customer walks in, you want it to look homey, clean, organized, tidy, zen. And the reality is the underneath the bed, very few people, if any, look underneath the bed. So stuff what you can under there. Cheat where you can. Tip number four, like with working with an agent when you're hiring us to help sell your home, hire a professional when it's needed. If you are overwhelmed with work, you don't have the time, you don't have the vision, you're too stressed out, but you have this, perhaps a little extra in the budget, there are so many varieties of professionals these days to help you get your home ready for sale. You can hire a stager, you can hire organizers, you can hire a declutterer. We even recently met with a feng shui expert who will help you reorganize and redesign your, your space to bring the best feng shui uh, you can find to sell the home. And the reality is because there's so many there's so many competitors in this day and age and there's so many websites like TaskRabbit and Fiverr and so many variations of just handy people around the reality is it's not that expensive anymore it's a very affordable options out there so don't be afraid to ask for help it's like me when I'm driving or I'm walking down the street and I don't know where I'm going I'm the first person to ask for directions I know there's a lot of you knuckleheads out there who refuse to ask for directions well when it comes to asking directions for getting your home ready for sale do not be the guy who doesn't ask Okay, so moving right along. Now the home is ready for sale. Tip number five would be, if you are having trouble keeping the home in the shape that we helped you get it in and you got yourself in, meaning it's now beautiful, we took the photos, the home looks immaculate, but now the kids are home from their spring break and it's all hell is broken loose. If you are having trouble keeping it in showing condition, a really good tip and strategy for you is have a showing schedule have very specific windows of time. As much as that handicaps the ability for buyers to get in, and I never like to do that, the reality is if you can't handle the responsibilities of having your home and keeping your home in great condition, have a set schedule. So if you're only showing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, at least you know Monday through Wednesday, you can do whatever you need to do. And then come Wednesday night or Thursday morning, you get the home in as immaculate condition as you possibly can, and then the home is ready to be shown Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. At least then you're putting your best foot forward on the limited time frame you have to show and you're not stressing out about having it ready every single day of the week and you have moments of pause and moments of relaxation so that you only have a set schedule to show the home. Um, so that's kind of what I would say is your best workaround if you're dealing with the inability to get the home in the best possible shape. Now, the reality is there are often times where even if you've put your best foot forward, the home just can't be optimized. What does that mean? That means that you uh, have a giant 
uh, you have a baby grand piano in the living room and it just takes up too much space and it's too hard to get rid of until you actually sell it because it's so ginormous and it's taking up half of your living room. The reality is we can't always optimize a home for sale. We do everything we can in our power to make it as good as it possibly can be, but in the end of the day, sometimes it just isn't perfect. We have to accept that fact. But this is collaboration. This is a team effort. When we list our clients' homes for sale, we really do take a, a an approach of this is this is a team and we're all working together for one outcome. And in order to get that outcome, we have to all be in tandem and in step and understand the limitations with which we are dealing. So if you do have, say, the baby grand situation, understand that not being able to optimize your home is oftentimes going to affect and impact the saleability and pricing of a home. So listen, if you're just like, listen, I have to do what I can do, I have to live with the home as is and I can't make it any better, we get that. We're never going to have ideal conditions or oftentimes we won't have ideal conditions. But what's really important is you accept the fact as our teammate that it could impact pricing. It's a very difficult for situation for us as brokers when we have a client who says, get me top dollar and does this amount of effort to get their home ready to show. You can see there is an incongruity there. And ultimately that owner is probably going to not get the outcome they desire. So set expectations accordingly and the outcome will be met. So those are my six tips for today's video. I hope you like them. We'd really love you to comment, leave some comments in the comment section. I'm not wearing a sweater, so I'll, for, for all you sweater haters out there, leave some other positive comments. Let me know if you think I missed anything, if you have any other tips you'd like to add. Feel free to subscribe to our newsletter. If you email us at glazerteam at corcoran.com, you can subscribe to our monthly newsletter where we talk a little bit more in detail in the written word of these types of topics. Um, and additionally, we also send out various emails from time to time about really great investment opportunities. We really do have our ears and eyes to the ground all the time. Therefore, we're always sending clients great opportunities. If you subscribe to our newsletter, you'll definitely be able to get those. Uh, furthermore, you can follow us on social media. In addition to friending us here uh, on the Facebook page, you can follow Glazer Team on the Facebook page, and you can also find us on Instagram, Glazer Team on Instagram, the Glazer Team everywhere. And you can also follow my personal handle if you wanna see how much food I consume, and that's Jay Glazer NYC. So thank you for joining us. We'll be back at you next week. Hopefully our tripod and technical difficulties will be remedied, and we'll get you with another episode. Thanks so much, and enjoy your weekend.